Now, the Savage Nation on Talk 910 KNEW. Well, I'm sitting here drinking a cup of uh, green tea, and I have a cup in my hand given to me by a relative who I love very dearly. And it says peace on the top, P-E-A-C-E. It does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of those things and still be calm in your heart. Isn't that the goal? If you can keep your head while all those around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, then you'll be a man, my son, Roger Kipling. It's been said many times and in many ways. Stress is not necessarily a bad thing. It's how you deal with the stress. If you're alive, you're going to have stress. There is no such thing as a stress-free life. Ask any fish, ask any ant, ask any leaf. The wind itself is in constant flux. So for people who keep saying, I don't want stress, I want to live without stress, they're not realistic. They're not living in the real world. But then when you take there varieties of stresses, the worst kinds are those that are not resolved. Unresolved stress is the killer. What, things you can't fight against, things that you have no control over are the things that kill you unless you learn how to accept the fact that there are certain things you have no power over. I, I mean, I, I guess that, that goes into the whole therapy racket, which is that, you know, I have no power over this, which is, you know, whatever. So I have fought against this uh, least wanted list because I know that I'm innocent and I know that she's guilty. I know that I'm right and I know that, that she's wrong. But the decision to scrap Jackie Smith's policy of naming people banned for Britain for spreading, uh, they call it hate, is, um, well, it's not a done deal. That's all. A lot of you thought it was. I thought it was until I learned from my lawyer this morning that it may not be. He sent me a letter saying it's not necessarily so. People reported Britain lives ban on Michael Savage. Free speech strengthened. Savage win no longer banned in Britain. I, I mean, I thank all the journalists who, who took it that way. I really do, and I want to thank all of you if you wrote articles to that effect. Radio Inc. said UK lives banned on Savage. I hope they're right. Savage sued Smith for libel over his inclusion on a list of 16 people, which also included extremist Islamic clerics, a former Ku Klux Klan Grand Wizard, and two Russian skinheads now in prison for their involvement in deaths of 20 people. Well, I'd be nice if it was over, but it's not over. Not over till it's over. So should I follow through with my lawsuit, even if they lift my name off the list, is one question. Many of you contributed money, some considerable amounts, by the way, and I want to thank you again. Should there be any fi funds left over at the end of all of this, and there may, may or may not be, um, I'm going to use it to to very good causes for other freedom of speech causes. That's where it'll go. But we're not there yet. It's not over yet. So we can talk about other things. How about this? I took my Cadillac out last night because it was hot. A 65 Caddy. And should I tell you I was wowed and it was wonderful and it was better than my new car? The answer is no. It fumed. It stinks. It's noisy. And that's what makes a big old American car fun. But i got to tell you, the new cars are a lot better. <laughs> they really are. It rides better than the new car. There's no car that has ridden as good as the 65 Caddy that I've ever owned because of the size of it. The 19 point, it's 19 feet 6 inches long. The steel in it is so heavy. The glass is so thick. You know, you remember my, my metaphor when uh, the chrome was thick and the women were straight? By the way, forgive me if I sound exhausted. I am. I'm dead tired. I don't know what it is. This whole thing is... I feel more tired today than I did in the middle of this whole battle. I feel really drained from it all right now. <clears throat> I feel just wasted from it all. It's such a waste of energy. You know, think of what I could have been doing for this, this time I've been involved with lawyers and re reading letters from lawyers all day long and strategizing and worrying about it. And, you know, what's next? Who's next? What's this government up to? You know, I have no faith in the Obama administration. I think they're pure evil. I give them absolutely no credit for anything. I think that they're the most dangerous gang that ever took over the country. I'm telling you how I see it. I fear them. And the people are not supposed to fear a country, a government that's democratic. Forget that they're public servants. They never were. I never believed that. But their relative levels of, of uh, government um, uh, let us say, power and government um, audacity and government danger 
We're very close to losing our freedoms entirely in this country from this gang. This gang will stop at nothing to bust out this country for gain. I keep making the metaphor up from the Sopranos of the gambler, gets in over his head, loses a fortune. He has the IOUs, and then the mob takes over his huge sporting goods store. They move in the back room, and they start charging him interest only. He can never pay it back because it's 19% a week. So eventually they start <clears throat> selling things out the back door. First it's the hats, then, they, then it's the baseball gloves. And little by little, the sporting goods store has empty shelves, emptier and emptier, just as the Clinton administration and then the Bush administration and now the Obama administration have sold off our national pride and our national sovereignty, transferring whole factories to China and to India and who are now eating us for breakfast, sending our technology there, just like the gang that took over the sporting goods store. Until eventually, when there's very little of value left to sell, uh, they take the credit, the line of credit that the sporting goods store has, and they run up a couple hundred grand worth of first-class airline tickets, uh, intending never to pay the tab. And then they start giving the tickets away or selling them at a discount, exactly as Obama and Pelosi and Dodd are doing now with a $3 trillion budget. It's not their money. They're taking our credit line, and they're spending it just like the gang that took over the sporting goods store in The Sopranos. They don't intend to pay that back. They don't give a rat's behind about paying it back. All they care about is flying in a G500 now. They don't care about tomorrow. They don't care about their children or the children's children. These are blind people who are drunk on power, who are giving not a thought to tomorrow. All they care about is more power. How do I fit into all of this? Exactly in some ways and in no way. Any conservative who points this out is a threat to this gang. And although in other countries they just outright kill you, we're not there yet. In pure tyrannies, and forget freedom of speech, any critic has is, is disappeared. They do it in Russia. And I have long feared that this was coming to this country, where any critic of a despotic regime would be killed. They tried to smear me. They tried to get me banned. They tried to exile me. I fear this government. I fear it every day of my life. I have no faith in it. And so, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, what's next from Mr. President? We have no idea. San Antonio, Stacy, you're on the Savage Nation. Hi, Michael. How are you? What's on your mind, Stacy? Well, you know, Michael, I always considered myself pretty much a liberal. Then I started listening to you, and the things that you say, the truth, the truth, the truth that you speak, speak to me. I can't hear you, Stacy. You'll have to speak louder. I just Speak as loud as you can. The truth that you speak, speak to me. All right, then I'm a dangerous man. I'm a very dangerous man. Truth is very dangerous to liars, isn't it? No, no. I, 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 think, I think you're brilliant. I think that what you say is... All right, but Stacy, what I'm saying is you were once very liberal, and now you think you're a conservative. That's why I say I'm a very dangerous man to a liberal regime. Thank you for the call. Idaho, Aaron, you're up next on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Please. Dr. Savage, I am so happy for you. Your victory is our victory. You have called the liberals crap, and they're going to fold. You are going to win this. Dr. Savage, I, know, I want you to know that you thought you were alone in this. It wasn't just Jerry Dale and Rusty Humphreys. Our local radio talk show host broke the story the day it happened. He screamed, if this happens to Michael, well, won't this happen to me? And I want you to know that there is also one other conservative talk show host who does deserve condemnation. That's Groucho Marx, who actually praised England for putting on the list. And then he has the audacity to accuse you of copying him when he stole the phrase Islamofascism from you. He even stole the dog idea from you. Yeah, you know, no, he's a completely horrible man. He's an evil little man. He's a lawyer. Never forget he's a lawyer who worked for George Bush. That's all you need to know. And he poses as a conservative. It's shocking anybody would not see through this little twerp. 
But look, his voice alone has condemned him to the to the hinterland. He'll never get any traction. He sounds like Groucho Marx. He's not the issue. He's a fly in a crap house wall, as far as I'm concerned. For taking the side of England, what does that say about a man who opposes as a conservative and is a good friend of Sean Hannity? What does that tell you? It tells me that... What does that tell you about Sean Hannity? What does it tell you about Sean Hannity who didn't lift a finger? That lousy, corn beef eating fraud. Don't get me started with that faker. I didn't want to lose my temper today, but I tell you who he is to me. He's out to put an apron on and stop faking it. Don't get, I'm sorry I got angry. I don't even want to talk about it. He should put on an apron, Sean Hannity, and take a job in Duffy's Tavern. That's all he's good for, that faker. If he didn't follow Rush Limbaugh, he never would be anywhere. Let me, let me get off the air now. Yeah. The Savage Nation. It says a lot of things people don't have the uh, boldness to say. Weekday afternoons, 3 to